Hi everyone, this is Ryan from rpnt.ca, and today we're going to be talking about the drug anoxaparin, also known as Lovenox. Anoxaparin belongs to the Low Molecular Weight Heparin, or LMWH, drug classification, a type of anticoagulant. Anticoagulants are drugs that decrease blood clotting by inhibiting clotting factors. Clotting factors are proteins in the blood that make up one of two important steps that cause our blood to clot the other being platelet aggregation. There are many different clotting factors, from clotting factors 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 13, and many others on top of that. Low molecular weight heparins work very similar to unfractionated heparin. They increase the anticoagulant effects of antithrombin 3, which inhibits clotting factors 2A and 10A, which is the same way that heparin works. By inhibiting these clotting factors, it makes it harder for the blood to clot. Without going too deep into how clotting factors 2A and 10A work, it is important to know that they are normally responsible for helping to produce fibrin. Fibrin is essential to clotting because it forms long threads in a mesh-like structure that help to trap platelets and blood cells. So again, anoxaparin works similarly to heparin by inhibiting clotting factors 2A and 10A, ultimately decreasing clotting. One difference with anoxaparin, because it is a low molecular weight heparin, is that the effects on clotting factor 2A are diminished. Again, we won't go too deep into why this is, but it helps to know that you can think of the strength of heparins like this. The higher the molecular weight, the stronger the effects. So overall, low molecular weight heparins are considered weaker. However, the effects of low molecular weight heparins are more predictable than unfractionated heparin. Anoxaparin is used for the prevention and treatment of various abnormal blood clots. Uses include prevention of deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism. Anoxaparin can be used as an adjunct therapy in unstable angina and has other uses as well. Anoxaparin reduces both normal and abnormal blood clotting. This means that it may take longer for regular cuts or injuries to heal. Anoxaparin increases the risk for internal and external bleeding and bruising. Anoxaparin is contraindicated in clients who have uncontrolled active bleeding or clients who have thrombocytopenia, also known as low platelet count, due to the increased risk for hemorrhage. Other side effects include decreased renal function and osteoporosis with long-term therapy. Always assess and monitor for side effects of anoxaparin, mainly bleeding. Instruct clients to use electric razors when shaving rather than manual to reduce the risk of bleeding. Soft bristle toothbrushes can also be used to reduce gum bleeding. It is important to note that anoxaparin does not get rid of pre-existing clots. Thrombolytics, also known as clot busters, are required to lyse or break up a pre-existing clot. Anoxaparin is most often given by subcutaneous injection and often comes in a pre-filled syringe. It is important to not expel the bubble from the syringe before administration and not to aspirate the needle during injection. The antidote for anoxaparin is the same as heparin, which is protamine sulfate, which works by binding to anoxaparin and the result no longer has anticoagulant effects. And that's about it for anoxaparin. In the video description, I've placed a link of this overview of coagulation modifiers that might help with other drugs that affect blood clotting. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments or visit rpnt.ca for more help.